Terence Francis Terry Eagleton FBA born the 22nd of February 1943 is a British literary theorist, critic and public intellectual. He is currently Distinguished Professor of English Literature at Lancaster University. Eagleton has published over 40 books, but remains best known for Literary Theory, An Introduction 1983, which has sold over 750,000 copies. The work elucidated the emerging literary theory of the period. He has also been a prominent critic of postmodernism, publishing works such as The Illusions of Postmodernism 1996. Formerly the Thomas Wharton Professor of English Literature at the University of Oxford 1992-2001 and John Edward Taylor Professor of Cultural Theory at the University of Manchester 2001-2008, Eagleton has held visiting appointments at universities around the world including Cornell, Duke, Iowa, Melbourne, Trinity College in Dublin, and Yale. Eagleton delivered Yale University's 2008 Terry Lectures and the University of Edinburgh's 2010 Gifford Lecture entitled The God Debate. He gave the 2010 Richard Price Memorial Lecture at Newington Green Unitarian Church, speaking on The New Atheism and the War on Terror. In 2009, he published a book which accompanied his lectures on religion, entitled Reason, Faith, and Revolution, Reflections on the God Debate. Topic Early life Eagleton was born to Francis Paul Eagleton and his wife, Rosaline nay Riley. He grew up in a working-class Irish Catholic family in Salford, with roots in County Galway. His mother's side of the family had strong Irish Republican sympathies. He served as an altar boy at a local Carmelite convent where he was responsible for escorting novice nuns taking their vows, a role referred to in the title of his memoir The Gatekeeper. Topic education and academia He was educated at De La Salle College, a Roman Catholic grammar school in Pendleton, Salford. In 1961 he went to read English at Trinity College, Cambridge from where he graduated with a first. He later described his undergraduate experience as a waste of time. In 1964, he moved to Jesus College, Cambridge, where as a junior research fellow and doctoral student, he became the youngest fellow at the college since the 18th century. He was supervised by Raymond Williams. It was during this period that his leftist convictions began to take hold, and he edited a radical Catholic leftist periodical called Slant. In 1969, he moved to the University of Oxford, where he became a fellow and tutor of Wadham College (1969–1989), Lineker College (1989–1993), and St Catherine's College, becoming Thomas Wharton Professor of English in 1992. At Wadham, Eagleton ran a well-known seminar on Marxist literary theory which, in the 1980s, metamorphosed into the radical pressure group Oxford English Limited and its journal News from Nowhere, journal of the Oxford English faculty opposition, to which he contributed several pieces. In 2001 Eagleton left Oxford to occupy the John Edward Taylor Chair of Cultural Theory at the University of Manchester. Topic career He began his literary studies with the 19th and 20th centuries, then conformed to the stringent academic Marxism of the 1970s. He then published an attack on his mentor Williams's relation to the Marxist tradition in the pages of the New Left Review, in the mode of the French critic Louis Althusser. In the 1960s, he became involved with the left-wing Catholic group Slant, authoring a number of theological articles including a Marxist interpretation of benediction, as well as a book towards a new left theology. A major turning point was his Criticism and Ideology 1976, in which Eagleton discusses various theorists and critics from Fr. Levis and his tutor Raymond Williams to Pierre Mockery. This earliest response to theory is critical and substantive with Eagleton supplying a dense web of categories for a materialist criticism, which situates the author as well as the text in the general mode of production, the literary mode of production and particular ideologies. In Chapter 4 he gives a thorough overview of one theme in the English context, organicist concepts of society, or community as worked by petty bourgeois Victorian writers, from George Eliot to D.H. Lawrence, and how this determines textual form in each instance. Topic. Literary theory and after theory In Literary Theory, An Introduction 1983, revised 1996, Eagleton surveys the history of theoretical approaches to literature, from its beginnings with Matthew Arnold, through formalism, psychoanalysis, and structuralism, to post-structuralism. In the process, he demonstrates what is the thesis of the book, that theory is necessarily political. 
Theory is always presented as if it is unstained by point of view and is neutral, but in fact it is impossible to avoid having a political perspective. Peter Barry has said of the book that it greatly contributed to the consolidation of literary theory and helped to establish it firmly on the undergraduate curriculum." Eagleton's approach to literary criticism is one firmly rooted in the Marxist tradition, though he has also incorporated techniques and ideas from more recent modes of thought as structuralism, Lacanian analysis and deconstruction. As his memoir The Gatekeeper recounts, Eagleton's Marxism has never been solely an academic pursuit. He was active in the International Socialists along with Christopher Hitchens and then the Workers' Socialist League whilst in Oxford. He has been a regular contributor to the London Review of Books, After Theory 2003 was written two decades later, after the end of the Great Period of High Theory. The Cultural Theory of Foucault, The Postmodernists, Derrida, et al. Looking back, Eagleton evaluates its achievements and failures, and proposes new directions needing to be pursued. He considers that among the great achievements of theory were the expansion of objects of study to include gender, sexuality, popular culture, post-colonialism, etc., and the wide-ranging self-reflective criticism of traditional assumptions. But in Eagleton's estimation there were also many serious mistakes, for instance, the assault on the normative and the insistence on the relativity of truth leaves us powerless to criticize oppression, the rejection of objectivity and excessively of all forms of essentialism bespeak an unrecognized idealism, or at least a blindness to our human materiality, ultimately born of an unconscious fear of death, and cultural studies has wrongly avoided consideration of ethics, which for Eagleton is inextricably tied to a proper politics. It is virtue and politics and how they may be realized, among other things, that Eagleton offers as new avenues needing to be explored by cultural studies. And that is the link to his previous work, Literary Theory, which proposed that all theory is ultimately political. After theory fleshes out this political aspect, tied to ethics, growing out of the fact that humans exist in neediness and dependency on others, their freedom bounded by the common fact of death. Topic. Dawkins, Hitchens and the New Atheism Eagleton has become a vocal critic of what has been called the New Atheism. In October 2006, he published a review of Richard Dawkins's The God Delusion in the London Review of Books. Eagleton begins by questioning Dawkins's methodology and understanding. Imagine someone holding forth on biology whose only knowledge of the subject is the book of British birds, and you have a rough idea of what it feels like to read Richard Dawkins on theology." Eagleton further writes, "...nor does Dawkins understand that because God is transcendent of us which is another way of saying that he did not have to bring us about, he is free of any neurotic need for us and wants simply to be allowed to love us." He concludes by suggesting Dawkins has not been attacking organized faith so much as a sort of rhetorical straw man, apart from the occasional perfunctory gesture to sophisticated religious believers. Dawkins tends to see religion and fundamentalist religion as one and the same. This is not only grotesquely false, it is also a device to outflank any more reflective kind of faith by implying that it belongs to the coterie and not to the mass. The huge numbers of believers who hold something like the theology I outlined above can thus be conveniently lumped with rednecks who murder abortionists and malign homosexuals. Topic: <laughs> Terry and Gifford lectures. In April 2008, Eagleton delivered Yale University's Terry lectures with the title "Faith and Fundamentalism: Is Belief in Richard Dawkins Necessary for Salvation?" constituting a continuation of the critique he had begun in the London Review of Books. Introducing his first lecture with an admission of ignorance of both theology and science, Eagleton goes on to affirm, "All I can claim in this respect, alas, is that I think I may know just about enough theology to be able to spot when someone like Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens, a couplet I shall henceforth reduce for convenience to the solitary signifier Ditchkins, is talking out of the back of his neck." An expanded version of these lectures was published in 2009 as Reason, Faith, and Revolution, Reflections on the God Debate. Topic. Football Eagleton sees football as a new opium of the people distracting ordinary people from more serious, important social concerns. 
Eagleton is pessimistic as to whether this distraction can be ended. Topic: <laughs> Criticism of Martin and Kingsley Amos. In late 2007, a critique of Martin Amos included in the introduction to a 2007 edition of Eagleton's book Ideology was widely reprinted in the British press. In it, Eagleton took issue with Amos' widely quoted writings on Islamism, directing particular attention to one specific passage from an interview with Ginny Duggary published in The Times on 9 September 2006. What can we do to raise the price of them doing this? There's a definite urge, don't you have it? To say, the Muslim community will have to suffer until it gets its house in order, what sort of suffering? Not letting them travel. Deportation, further down the road. Curtailing of freedoms. Strip-searching people who look like they're from the Middle East or from Pakistan. Discriminatory stuff, until it hurts the whole community and they start getting tough with their children. It's a huge dereliction on their part. Eagleton criticized Amos and expressed surprise as to its source, stating, these are not the ramblings of a British National Party thug, but the reflections of Martin Amos, leading luminary of the English metropolitan literary world. He drew a connection between Amos and his father, the novelist Kingsley Amos. Eagleton went on to write that Martin Amos had learned more from his father, whom Eagleton described as a reactionary, racist, anti-Semitic boor, a drink sodden, self-hating reviler of women, gays, and liberals than merely how to turn a shapely phrase. Eagleton added there was something rather stomach-churning at the sight of those such as Amos and his political allies, champions of a civilization that for centuries has wreaked untold carnage throughout the world, shrieking for illegal measures when they find themselves for the first time on the sticky end of the same treatment. The essay became a cause celebre in British literary circles. Yasmin Alibi Brown, a commentator for The Independent, wrote an article about the affair, to which Amos responded via open letter, calling Eagleton an ideological relict unable to get out of bed in the morning without the dual guidance of God and Karl Marx. Amos said the views Eagleton attributed to him as his considered opinion was in fact his spoken description of a tempting urge, in relation to the need to raise the price of terrorist actions. Eagleton's personal comments on Kingsley Amos prompted a further response from Kingsley's widow, the novelist Elizabeth Jane Howard. Howard wrote to the Daily Telegraph, noting that for a supposed anti-Semitic homophobe, it was peculiar that the only guests at the Howard Amos nuptials were either Jewish or gay. As Howard explained, Kingsley was never a racist, nor an anti-Semitic boor. Our four great friends who witnessed our wedding were three Jews and one homosexual. Quote. In a later interview, Howard added, I have never even heard of this man Eagleton. But he seems to be a rather lethal combination of a Roman Catholic and a Marxist. He strikes me as like a spitting cobra, if you get within his range he'll unleash some poison. Colin Howard, Howard's homosexual brother, called Professor Eagleton. A little squirt, adding that Sir Kingsley, far from being homophobic, had extended an affectionate friendship to him and helped him come to terms with his sexuality. Eagleton defended his comments about Martin and Kingsley Amos in The Guardian, claiming the main bone of contention, the substance of Amos' remarks and views, had been lost amid the media furore. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Critical reactions. William Derisovich wrote of After Theory, Eagleton's book, as follows I s it that hard to explain what Eagleton's up to? The prolificness, the self-plagiarism, the snappy, highly consumable prose and, of course, the sales figures, Eagleton wishes for capitalism's demise, but as long as it's here, he plans to do as well as he can out of it. Someone who owns three homes shouldn't be preaching self-sacrifice, and someone whose careerism at Oxbridge was legendary shouldn't be telling interviewers of his long-standing regret at having turned down a job at the Open University. Novelist and critic David Lodge, writing in the May 2004 New York Review of Books on Theory and After Theory, concluded, Some of theory's achievements are genuine and permanent additions to knowledge, or intellectual self-knowledge. Eagleton is quite right to assert that we can never go back to a state of pre-theory innocence about the transparency of language or the ideological neutrality of interpretation. 
but like all fashions it was bound to have a limited life of novelty and vitality, and we are now living through its decadence without any clear indication of what will supersede it. Theory has, in short, become boringly predictable to many people who were once enthusiastic about it, and that after theory is most interesting when its focus is furthest from its nominal subject is perhaps evidence that Terry Eagleton is now bored by it too. Topic. Family. Eagleton is married to his second wife, an American academic, Willa Murphy, with whom he has three children. The couple live in Northern Ireland where Murphy is a lecturer at the University of Ulster. Eagleton has two other sons by his first marriage, which ended in 1976 after ten years. Topic publications The New Left Church as Terence Eagleton 1966 Shakespeare and Society Critical Studies in Shakespearean Drama 1967 Exiles and Emigres Studies in Modern Literature 1970 The Body as Language Outline of a New Left Theology 1970 Myths of Power A Marxist Study of the Brontes 1975 Criticism and Ideology 1976 Marxism and Literary Criticism 1976 Walter Benjamin or Towards a Revolutionary Criticism 1981, The Rape of Clarissa, Writing, Sexuality, and Class Struggle in Samuel Richardson 1982, Literary Theory, An Introduction 1983, The Function of Criticism 1984, Saints and Scholars 1987, A Novel Raymond Williams, Critical Perspectives 1989, Editor Saint Oscar 1989, A Play About Oscar Wilde The Significance of Theory 1989, The Ideology of the Aesthetic 1990, Nationalism, Colonialism, and Literature 1990, Ideology, An Introduction 1991-2007, Wittgenstein, The Terry Eagleton Script, The Derek Jarman Film 1993, Literary Theory 1996, The Illusions of Postmodernism 1996, Heathcliff and the Great Hunger 1996, Marx 1997, Crazy John and the Bishop and Other Essays on Irish Culture 1998, The Idea of Culture 2000, The Truth About the Irish 2001, the Gatekeeper, a memoir, 2002. Sweet Violence, The Idea of the Tragic, 2002. After Theory, 2003. Figures of Descent, Reviewing Fish, Spivak, Zizek, and others, 2003. The English Novel, An Introduction, 2005. Holy Terror, 2005. The Meaning of Life, 2007. How to Read a Poem, 2007. Trouble with Strangers, A Study of Ethics, 2008. Literary Theory, Anniversary Edition, 2008. Reason, Faith, and Revolution, Reflections. On the God Debate, 2009. The Task of the Critic. Terry Eagleton in dialogue with Matthew Beaumont, 2009. On Evil, 2010. Why Marx Was Right, 2011. The Event of Literature, 2012. Across the Pond: An Englishman's View of America, 2013. How to Read Literature, 2013. Culture and the Death of God, 2014. Hope Without Optimism, 2015. Culture, 2016. Materialism, 2017. Radical Sacrifice, 2018. Topic references. Topic further reading. James. Smith, Terry Eagleton, Polity, 2008. Topic external links Why Marx Was Right, in his book Why Marx Was Right, Eagleton makes the case for Marx's resurrection, challenging objections and explaining why his thought remains as relevant as ever. High Priest of Lit Crit, The Guardian, 2 February 2002 Profile on the publication of Eagleton's memoir, The Gatekeeper Some articles by Eagleton, London Review of Books website article on socialism at redpepper.org.uk The Roots of Terror at redpepper.org.uk Shakespeare and the Class Struggle Extract from Eagleton's 1979 play Brecht and Company. Terry Eagleton at British Council, Literature Tim Adams the Armchair Revolutionary Interview, The Observer, 16 December 2007 Dawkins, Eagleton Knoll by Klaus Rode Permanent Dead Link Jonathan Derbyshire, The Task of the Critic, Terry Eagleton in Dialogue, New Statesman, of March 2010 Terry Eagleton, In Praise of Marx, Article, The Chronicle Review, 10 April 2011 an interview with Terry Eagleton, Oxonian Review, with Alex Barker and Alex Niven. Terry Eagleton and Marxist Literary Criticism by Ian Burkle, 1982.